Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And today is the most famous occasion of Guru Purnima. So I was waiting to make this video uh, and release it on 5th uh, of July 2020. And this video is all the things that you need to know about a guru because most of the times uh, many people keep asking me why do we need a guru who is a guru uh, do we need a guru at all or how do we find a guru in kali yuga especially all right so i'll address all these questions uh, in this video uh, although primarily this video is named as uh, how to find a guru in kali yuga so now um, disclaimer uh, this is going to be a bit heavy video <laughs> So there are many things which I will say here which may pinch you uh, because of which you may not like me and you may want to walk out of this video. So if you can digest poison only then you should watch this video. Disclaimer beforehand. All right. Heavy stuff here. Uh, no sweet talks today. It's Guru Purnima. All the sweet talks are out. <laughs> and most importantly, uh, you have to understand uh, that there is a good news and there is a bad news. Okay. So what is, uh, should I give the good news first or the bad news first? Yes, let's give the bad news. Why? Because the good news will nullify the bad news. All right. So the bad news is you cannot find a guru. It's not possible. Why? Because guru takes you beyond matter actually. Okay. He takes you beyond these material coverings. If you read the Srimad Bhagavatam, you know, there is like you know, art. There's a covering of earth actually, you know, earth, water, air, fire, ether, and there is, you know, mind, intelligence, false ego, you know, man, buddhi, ahankar, and I mean, then, then it's so complicated, the universe, okay, you, you, we are doing karmas, good karmas, bad karmas, we are taking birth again and again and again, so Guru is one who stops this and takes us back to the spiritual world for eternity, never to return. As Krishna says in the Gita, na, yad gatva nani vartante, the one who reaches my abode does not return back to this material world. Okay, so, so whenever we talk of Guru, we talk in a very simplistic manner actually, but, but it's not like that. So you have to understand. So it is, it is not within the reach of a living entity, like living entity means spirit souls like you and me, to find a guru. It's not possible. How can you find somebody who takes you beyond? That is impossible. Okay. So that is the bad news. And then what is the good news then, which will nullify this? The good news is that that is not your job. Finding a guru is not your job. That is none of your business. Well, then whose business is it? It is Lord Vishnu's job. That is his job. Okay, He does it. That is his responsibility because the scriptures are very clear when it comes to this. The scriptures say that by mercy of God, one finds a guru. And by the mercy of guru, one reaches God. Okay, One, find, uh, one finds God or reaches God, whatever you want to say. So, God gives you a guru and then by the blessings of the guru, you uh, reach him actually. Okay. But the question is, let's discuss the other things, you know, uh, what is the meaning of the word guru actually? The guru, word guru has many meanings. Uh, one of the meanings it is uh, very heavy. Guru means very heavy. Okay. Uh, what is the meaning of the word heavy? Heavy means he is very heavy because uh, his uh, words are sometimes like thunder, which crushes the false ego, which uh, people do not like to hear because uh, materialistic people, they are so much obsessed with themselves. They are obsessed with sex life, with wine, with meat, with watching TV, Netflix, ruining their life. So they just want to hear good things. That is why materialistic people, you will see, they will only go and sit with them who will praise them. All right. Not, not praise means not literally like uh, they will put them in a pedestal, but will always be, you know, uh, I mean, uh, like you will see drunkards. They will only roam with drunkards. Have you seen? They will always be grouping together. And the moment you, if you are a drunkard, you stop drinking, they will kick you out. They will throw you out. They will laugh mark and circles. Yes, this is how they behave. That's how materialistic people 
behave and um, therefore uh, it's very pinching to the false ego because the false ego the soul has left god in the spiritual world and come to this world to pretend to be like god everybody in this world is trying to pretend like god okay so everybody wants to be very attractive everybody wants to be very intelligent everybody wants to be very wealthy everybody wants to be famous and these are all traits of god and uh, Parashar Muni describes uh, that God has six opulences, these opulences which I told. And he also describes um, God is one who has all these opulences, uh, all the six opulences, and in full and more than anybody else in this universe. Okay. So, uh, like people say, you know, oh, you'll become a millionaire, billionaire. So, let me say this in Hindi, you know. Uh, uh, Lakpati ban sakte, karodpati ban sakte, lekin aap lakshmipati nahi ban sakte. You cannot become Vishnu. That's not possible. But that is what people try to uh, try to imitate sometimes. Okay. So the thing is, uh, that's the meaning of the word guru. The guru is very heavy. So uh, many times people uh, have this fancy idea of getting a guru or you know. Uh, taking shelter of a guru but then when they actually get then it, it takes a lot of courage and stamina and uh, belief actually uh, and discipline to follow what the guru says okay so the guru's prime duty is to enlighten you about god that is the prime number one the most important duty okay if the guru is not doing that and in, in india especially uh, sorry to say but there are many uh, Ashirvad Gurus, have you seen? Sab Shubho, Tum Shubho, Kalyan Ho, Kalyan Ho, Shubho, Shubho, Sab Shubho. This is, this is total cheating nonsense business. This is stupidity. That's, uh, that's not the job of a Guru to keep going and blessing people. Ha ha, Shubho, Beta foreign jayega, be, Beti foreign jayegi, Beta ka shadi hoga, Bete ka peti ki so going on blessing people like this, that's not the job of a guru. Okay, The guru's job is to enlighten you from the scriptural texts and tell you what you should do in life so that you can obtain spiritual elevation. And that is why the guru's position is the at the top. There is, there is nobody in spiritual life above than the guru. Okay. In fact, uh, this is one famous Acharya, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in the Gaudiya Sampradaya. He, he has made a very beautiful poem in which he says, you know, Saksha, Saksha Samasta Sastir. So he says that the spiritual master's position is as equal to God. Okay. So now this does not mean uh, that this, the Guru is above God. Okay. Some, there are also many gurus who come and say that, oh, actually, you don't need all this uh, God, you know, all this Ram and all this Krishna. You don't need all this. Actually, you worship me, then that is like worshipping Ram or you know, that's like worshipping Krishna. No, that's stupidity. Uh, my Shiksha Guru used to say, any guru who says that he is God, he is actually opposite. Okay, so now you translate it. G-O-D, you reverse it. What happens? Okay. So a bona fide guru will always present himself as the servant of God, the ultimate servant of God, and will also encourage you to be a servant of God and follow very pure principles. Okay. And to the degree the standards are higher, to that degree you make spiritual progress. If the if the guru is giving you all second hand, third class, low grade principles, you know, oh, you can do whatever you want, you know, you want to have sex with somebody, have, you know, as much as you want, no problem, sub tikke, ye bhi tikke, wo bhi tikke. Well, then again, it's opposite of, <laughs> you know, G-O-D, you reverse it, okay. So that's, that's uh, what is, what happens sometimes. So, so then uh, this is the, this is the prime responsibility of a guru, okay. And of course, everybody cannot follow very high standards. So then the Guru's job is, uh, the Guru should be able to give you uh, principles as per your standard. Uh, so the Guru says, okay, you are here. So you you try to follow this. Okay. So this is the gap. So then when you come here, he says, now you follow this. When you come here, now you follow this. Okay. So that is the job of a Guru. He elevates you gradually okay the guru doesn't come and say oh, oh what, what you are doing all this you know this is all nonsense just leave it go to the forest no the guru doesn't say like this the guru sees if somebody is a good singer then the guru encourages that person to sing bhajans if somebody is a good writer the person that guru encourages that disciple 
to write um, articles about spirituality or, uh, or poems about God or you know, write bhajan sometimes. Or the person is a very good dancer, then to dance and uh, express uh, spiritual, uh, express their inner traits. If somebody likes to cook, then they can cook bhoga and offer to God and accept it as prasad. If somebody likes to paint, they can draw paintings of Krishna or Ra. So, the Guru's prime duty is, apart from giving spiritual knowledge, is to also identify how best you can connect to God. Okay, that that is the actually the prime duty actually. And uh, now the thing is, uh, there are different types, different different levels of gurus actually. Not levels exactly, like different types. So the first type is um, the first category is known as Pat Pradasta Guru. Pat Pradasta Guru means one who introduces you to spirituality. So suppose you are um, you are going somewhere and somebody gave you a Bhagavad Gita. Okay. Oh hey, you should read this Bhagavad Gita. You know, Krishna said this to Arjuna. So then that 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 person has introduced uh, spiritual knowledge to you. So Pat Pradasta. Okay. So that means that person has given shown you the path actually. You should walk this side. Okay. So that is like your first guru. And then you have uh, the Shiksha Guru who gives you primary knowledge. Okay. And Shiksha Guru's position is very special because uh, Shiksha Guru enlightens you about the principles of the scriptures. Okay? And then you have third, you have uh, Diksha Guru, one who gives you initiation. Initiation means connecting you to the parampara, okay? to the parampara of the Acharyas who, which have descended down from uh, Krishna himself. So uh, Diksha Guru connects you to the parampara while giving you Diksha. Diksha is known as initiation. It is like a ceremony where um, you promise the Guru to, to follow certain scriptural standards like chanting a mantra for a particular amount of rounds and then uh, by after that and following certain pure principles, especially the regulative principles. Like Srimad Bhagavatam says, you know, there are four regulative principles. So one is uh, no intoxication, then no gambling, then no meat eating and no illicit sex. These four principles. When you promise, and um, then certain number of mantras, rounds, and some other gurus and other paramparas have uh, some other uh, levels and other standards also. So then, second, that is first initiation. That is known as Harinam Diksha. And then you have second initiation. Okay, that is known as Brahman Diksha. Brahman Diksha means. Anybody who is born in any family, you are born in a so-called Brahmin family, so-called Kshatriya or so-called uh, Vaishya or Sudra family or whatever you are, you can also get that Brahmin thread which Brahmins have, okay? And that is known as Brahmin Diksha, second initiation. That, that is given after a person follows the principles of Harinam Diksha for at least 5 to 10 years, okay? Because then the person becomes like a Brahmin, which means... Uh, the person becomes very tolerant and very nice and very much forgiving and all the brahminical qualities manifest. Okay? So as Krishna says in the Gita, Chatur Varnyam Maya system, Guna Karma Vibhagasa, that I have created uh, these four categories of people depending on their Guna and Karma. Guna and Karma means qualities and actions. He does not say Janma Karma Vibhagasa. He does not say that I have created this as per birth. Okay. So then that is like Brahman initiation, okay. Uh, but anyways, um, uh, the first initiation is also very important, okay. And um, if somebody wants to uh, obtain perfection of human life, which means like as Krishna says in the Gita, Yad Gatwa so the scriptures are very clear that one must take at least the first initiation. Harinam Diksha has to be taken. Uh, without that, the person cannot get liberation from this cycle of birth and death. Why? Because uh, what happens during Diksha actually, the, the Guru promises uh, God, uh, Krishna, on your behalf that, okay, this person has promised me that he or she will follow certain uh, regulations and rules and change his or her lifestyle. So, Please burn off all the karmas that he or she has committed in the millions and billions and trillions of lifetimes you know, which we have suffered in this material world. So then when Diksha ceremony is going on, there is a banana which is taken 
and the guru puts the banana in the fire and that banana contains all the crap that you have done <laughs> all right so whatever karma you have in this lifetime that remains okay and if now and if you are not committing more sinful activities in this life then you will go back to the spiritual world in this very life at the end of this very life that is guaranteed but if you are again doing nonsense then you will again have to take another birth then then again the cycle starts you know, it's like the game begins again and then uh, god really punishes you because you have cheated a guru actually because you gave some promise and you did not keep it okay so that is the over overview of guru tattva and guru is very uh, guru is very important now sometimes people ask why do we need a guru i mean god is there uh, everywhere as i also keep saying now god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him but yes definitely he is there krishna says i am there in everybody's heart uh, and that brings me to the fourth guru which is known who is known as chaitya guru chaitya guru is uh, parmatma himself who is there the four hundred vishnu form which is there in, inside your heart but the problem is uh, there is a wall between you and the chaitya guru what is that wall it is the wall of sinful materialistic desires all right all the papa it is known as papa pakchi pakchi means bird <laughs> all the sinful birds all the sinful desires they are like uh, that uh, what you say no? they are like this uh, wall which interferes between communication between you and the parmatma so the scriptures say that at our level at condition stage when we are uh, engrossed in materialistic desires then we cannot communicate with the chaitya guru but nowadays there is this fancy idea you know there's this inner guru, inner self, inner universe, inner me, inner you, inner, 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 all, all inner actually, you know, so it's inner crap basically. Because so sometimes people think that I have got some voice from inside, you know, how do I know? Is it God's voice or whose voice? So it's very clear. How do you know the voice inside uh, you which is coming is from your uh, whimsical mind uh, or it is from the Paramatma? How do you know this? Well, it's very clear. Uh, if the voice that you are getting from inside matches with what Krishna says in the Gita and what is there in the scriptures, then that is the voice of the Paramatma. If it is not, if it is contrary, like one person told me that, actually, you know, I was sitting somewhere and uh, God gave me motivation to go and smoke. I said, uh, well, uh, God uh, gave you motivation. How do you come to this conclusion? No, there was some voice, inner voice. This an inner voice is voice of God, you know. That's not voice of God. That is your useless, filthy, dirty, disgusting, bloody mind giving some stupid suggestions. Okay. So, Bhagavatam also says, Mano rathe na sati dhavato bahi. The mind is, the mind is taking the, this, the soul into, you know, different places. You know, Mano ratha. Ratha means chariot. The mind is taking. Oh, today I like this girl. Oh, she's so beautiful. He's so handsome. He's so rich. You know, she's so intelligent. I like him. I like her. Sometimes I like many people these days. Hmm? Or, you know, I like Germany today. Tomorrow I like US. Tomorrow I like India. Tomorrow I like, you know, Mars. Maybe I don't like Earth. <laughs> Tomorrow I like sweets, tomorrow I like snacks, you know, tomorrow I like American food, tomorrow I like continental, tomorrow I like Punjabi food, tomorrow I like Bengali food, okay. So the mind is very whimsical, the nature of the mind, materialistic mind, which everybody has, uh, is very whimsical. Today you will see uh, the people, they stay uh, in relationships and suddenly they say, oh, we are not interested in this partner, no, we are interested in somebody else actually, you know. So this, this, these are examples of whimsical mind. You know, sometimes you like football. Tomorrow you say, Aaj mood nahi hai hamara. I don't have mood today. So let's see, you know, cricket is boring after all. Let's check football or let's check rugby. Okay. So, so most of the times, uh, the voices which come from within is the whimsical mind giving all these useless suggestions. Okay. So therefore, uh, it is very essential that we have shelter of our spiritual community and we uh, get in connection with our God brothers or God sisters by which we can eventually take diksha and we can obtain spiritual perfection. And a spiritual community is also required because uh, 
you now of course you can sit alone in home and do your mantras and you can do bhajans and all this but in my practical experience of doing consultations from many many years i have seen even if i give lot of spiritual practices the person does but after one year the person gives it up why because you you need the support of somebody you are not a dead living being you are not a stone you know like 99% of the people need some motivation from outside okay so therefore when you see that like me somebody else is doing then you get that motivation that is why in my channel i have started this you know a uh, success stories so that uh if somebody has joined some spiritual community and they have been benefited after seeing my videos or before seeing my videos doesn't matter please please send it to me then i will post it then others will also get inspired that yes if that person is doing why can't i do okay so therefore uh, you have to understand this uh, very clearly and the mantras that you chant and the scriptures that you read actually in the condition stage uh, we do it as an offering to the guru okay so uh, the guru is uh, the guru is the one who accepts our services so suppose you offer bhoga to god so we actually we actually do not offer bhoga to god actually we we offer to him but we actually offer it to offer it to the guru so the guru offers it on our behalf to god actually okay and then he accepts those offerings because our current state is we are very contaminated because you can check yourself whenever you are doing mantras do you get very pure thoughts or you are thinking of uh, the opposite sex or you are thinking of money or you are thinking of your schedule your meetings today what meeting i have you know oh today i have this meeting ye ho gaya wo ho gaya ye nahi hua aisa nahi hua wo hua ye hua aisa hua kya hoga wo hua to kya hoga this is all you are thinking when you are doing mantras right i have not found one human being till now who has told me that oh when i am doing mantras you know i feel like crying i get you know divine thoughts i feel as if you know i am in vrindavan i am here i am there i am in i am i am in the clouds actually i am in the spiritual realm actually you know? i never found one person till now in the last so many years i have not found till now right most of the times they they tell me that their mind is wandering basically okay so therefore uh, the thing is this is the understanding of guru tattva okay and then as i said in the beginning uh, it is not your job to find a guru so you can show your sincerity just today today is guru purnima on this day today you can sincerely pray to lord vishnu that please i am provided you are <laughs> <laughs> because see he is there in your heart you cannot cheat him right i mean you can cheat yourself sometimes or and you can cheat the rest of the world including yourself but you cannot cheat parvatma it's not possible so uh, if you are really in, uh, sincere in your heart then you should pray to him that just like you had sent narad muni to dhruva maharaj dhruva maharaj's story you can read in the shrimad bhagavatam today is the day you must read okay just like you sent narad muni to dhruva maharaj and then narad muni gave him dhruva maharaj this mantra om namo bhagavate vasudevaya and dhruva maharaj chanted this day and night for seven days seven nights and then at the end of seven days lord vishnu appeared in front of him okay so uh, if you are really 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 sincere in uh, to make some spiritual progress then you uh, then you must pray to lord vishnu sincerely today is the day you should pray okay you can pray to maharishi vyas dev you can pray to the guru of vyas dev na shri narad muni that please i am very since i am sincerely seeking your blessings and please guide me so that i can find a guru and when you sincerely pray like this then you will definitely find a guru okay you do not have to check your horoscope you do not have to check numerology you do not have to waste money on anything else just this one sincere prayer you need to do when you do that then you will find a guru okay and you have and if you have a egoistic attitude i don't need anybody i will do myself i will do it myself you know then you then you don't have hope your situation is hopeless okay so in that case what you should do suppose you are uh, you are very arrogant and you are very egoistic and you feel you don't need a guru you are very special you know you are like a extraordinary human being that lord brahma has created in this world okay 
So in that case, you should read the scriptures. Then you will realize how important it is to have a guru. And all the great personalities you take, uh, whichever scripture you take, any scripture, any, any personality you take, including Lord Ram and Lord Krishna, they also exemplified this, okay? Lord Ram had stayed in the ashram of Vashisht Muni and he had taken training, okay? And then he also had training from Vishwamitra Muni and he also got this uh, mantra from Agasti Rishi by which he had killed Rama, okay? Now, of course, Ram is Vishnu himself. He doesn't need some... Uh, Rishi to become his guru and you know give him guidance. I mean he doesn't need that, but he does it to sh to show to us to set an example okay, because he is Mariyada Purushottam. Similarly, Krishna also does that. He goes to the ashram of Sandipani Muni and he takes training, and then at the end he also gives Guru Darshana when he brings the children of Sandipani Muni back from Yamraj. All right. So uh, this is this is this is how it's important. You you have example of Shabri. You know she was a disciple of Matang Rishi. Then you have uh, the Pandavas. They were disciples of Vyasdev and uh, Dronacharya also. Bhishma Pitama, the great Bhishma, one of the twelve Mahajans. He is such a formidable warrior, such a great personality. One of the twelve Mahajans. He was a disciple of Parshuram. He has he had studied under Shukracharya and Brihaspati also. So these were his great gurus, all right? So you take example of Dhruva Maharaj. He had uh, Narad Muni as his guru. You know? And Narad Muni also has guru. He's Lord Brahma himself, his father. You know? And who is Brahma's guru? He's Lord Vishnu himself. You know, as Srimad Bhagavatam says, you know, Tene Brahma Hida Adi Kavaye Muhyanti Yatsura Yaha. First canto, first chapter, first verse, the intro, the beginning verse on the Srimad Bhagavatam. Tene Brahma Hida Adi Kavaye. Adi Kavi is Brahma. Brahma and Tene Brahma Hida means here this Brahma means spiritual knowledge was given to the heart of Adi Kavi. Adi Kavi is Lord Brahma who has created this universe. Who gave this? Vishnu himself, all right. So, therefore, whoever is there, uh, they you, you take any example, all right. You will always see they have been learning from their gurus and they have been very loyal, faithful servants of the gurus, all right. And that is the only way by which you make spiritual progress because when God sees that you are dedicated to the words of the guru, then you then God sees, okay, this person is really serious, I will call him back. All right. Otherwise, if you are whimsically doing something, then maybe you will need a lot of time. And then gradually, but I have seen in my experience, whoever is sincere, they, they gradually generally find a guru. I mean, because my Shiksha Guru used to say that God is more eager to bring you to him than you are to go to him. So I repeat, God is more eager to bring you to him than you are to go to him. All right. Because uh, you know that Mamandev steps are very long. So it is said that when we take one step towards God, he takes, he also takes one step, but his step is very long. Okay, His steps are like a million steps. <laughs> All right. So this day you can pray. And if you pray uh, sincerely, and that should reflect in your life also. If you are already doing spiritual practices, and uh, you are showing your sincerity to God. Read the Bhagavad Gita every day. Chant, uh, chant this mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Uh, chant Om Namo Narayana. Uh, these two mantras you can chant. You can also chant Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Vamana. You can also chant uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram, Ram Hare Hare. These four mantras you can chant. And many of you have already been chanting after seeing my videos. So if you show your sincerity to God and you follow these regulatory principles which are mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, then definitely without doubt somewhere in this lifetime, Lord Vishnu will arrange, okay? If he can arrange food for you, arrange money for you, arrange a partner for you, he can definitely arrange a guru for you, all right? So don't worry, trust him. And I have seen people's lives getting transformed after finding and meeting a guru, all right? And that is the way to spiritual elevation because Krishna says in the Gita, Tad vidhi pranipate na pari prashnena sevaya upadekchanti te jnanam jnani nastatva darshinaha. 
render service and and uh, inquire humbly from the uh, realized souls because they have seen the truth this is what krishna says to arjuna in the bhagavad gita all right thank you very much for your patience and it's a great day to do spiritual activities so do not waste this day okay thank you very much